again, we back to you with a brand new shader graph after a long time. If this is the first time you are watching us, I'm Ramis Altapaz, the co-founder of Binary Lunar and the developer of Avocado Game. In today's video, we will show you how to create an awesome shader graph for a black hole. And we tried our best to make it as realistic as possible based on our research and the information we gathered. So let's talk a bit first about black holes before we get started. A black hole is a place in space where gravity pulls so much that even light can't get out. The gravity is so strong because matter has been squeezed into a tiny space. This can happen when a star is dying. The gravitational lensing is used to visualize the black holes and it was predicted by Albert Einstein theory of general relativity and by the formula of the Einstein ring. And to explain how this visual effect is seen, the ray lights when it comes directly to the black hole event horizon, which is the core, will be sucked into its core, while the rays that far away 2.6 times from the core radius will rotate around an orbit around it and will be shooted to the other side of the black hole. And that explains why we can see something like uh, a stretched mirror of the things on the other side of the black hole. We found an article published in 2014 which applies all the concepts that we have mentioned and we used as a reference for building our shader graph so I give all the credits to the publisher of that article and I provided the link to that article in the description below. So let's start building our shader graph. We use the script from the article I mentioned as a guide to help me and also to help you understand what's happening. Then I created a, a new 2D project in Unity and as all my previous shader graph videos, you need to add the universal rendering pipelines from the package manager. Then create rendering universal pipeline, pipeline asset forward renderer and name it 2D renderer. Then assign that as a default setting in both the graphics and the quality menus. Then create new 2D shader graph using the unlit graph. Open that shader graph and let's start by adding the properties required to build this shader graph using the uh, variables identified in the article. So let's start by adding uh, a texture 2D. This will be used to get what the camera sees and input it to be processed in the shader graph then we need a vector 2 property for the position and we set it as a default to 0.5 on x and 0.5 on y because that represents the center of the black hole based on the uv coordinates then we need a vector 1 property to control the radius of the black hole and also we need a vector 2 property to control the ratio of the black hole if you don't want to make it uh, radial you can make it an oval if you want and finally we need the uh, vector one property to control the distance between the lens which is the camera and the black hole that also affects how we can see the black hole you can rename the variables references to match with the articles variables so let's start by converting the first line of the code into nodes by creating a UV node then use a subtract node to subtract the position parameter from the UV that will help us to create the offset required to shift the pixel to the desired position then just drag the ratio property then use a divide node to divide the offset we reached into the ratio we selected then we use a lens node to calculate the distance between the pixel and the center of the black hole and that representing the radius of Einstein ring. Then let's start doing the deformation formula by powering the distance property with 0.5 which means we are getting the root of the distance. Then we multiply that with the rad value we got from the last node then we'd use the power node again to power that value with 2. Then we use another multiply node to multiply the last result with the radius property we created to control the radius of the black hole. And finally we multiply the result with 2. Then we divide 1 on the result we got 
to get the deformation value. Now to apply this deformation, we get 1 minus the deformation value, then we multiply that with the offset to get that reflected vertex on the other side of the black hole. Then we add that offset to the center of the black hole, which is the position we chose, the middle of the black hole. And finally, we create sample texture 2D node and link the final result we reach to the UV. And the last step we need is to find a way to import what the camera sees from the scene and input it here to the shader to do all the process. So link the sample texture 2D to the color, save, and let's go back to the scene. Let's clean the scene from the references and I've downloaded an 8K wallpaper for the Milky Way Galaxy to be used in this project. I provided also the link in the description below. Now we need to capture what the camera sees by creating render texture, name it black hole render texture. And based on my experiments, I set the size on the X to 2400 and on the, X, on the Y to 1800. Now create a new camera and center both the main camera and the new camera to the center of the scene by setting the X and Y to zero. Rename the new camera to black hole camera and set the output of it to render texture to the texture and select the render texture we just created. Now we can go back to the shader graph and assign the default value for the sample texture 2D to the black hole render texture we just created. Save that. Now we need to render all what we got into something, so let's create a, a new square from the asset. Rename it to black hole area, drag that to the scene and resize it to fill the camera view. Of course set the order layer to 1 to be above the background. Now create a new material, name it black hole mat, drag our shader on the material, then drag our material to the black hole area. And now we started to see something of the results we have been working on. All what we need to do now is just to click on the black hole area and expand the material section and adjust all the parameters we have created in the shader graph to reach the appearance of the black hole we desire. Set the distance to 10. And now we started to see a good black hole, but it feels doesn't keeping the, the ratio one to one. That's because I made a mistake and didn't keep the ratio for the black hole area in the X similar to Y. So you need to resize and keep the ratio of the square. So for me, it's 22 by 22 on the X and Y. I kept adjusting the properties till I reached a good result which uh, achieved by setting the distance to something around 85, setting the radius to uh, 0 0.9, while the black hole area is 20 on X and 20 on the Y. Now to make the black hole moves with the camera, we need to drag the black hole camera under the black hole area, then drag the black hole area to be a child of the main camera. Now as you can see you can move the main camera and you can see the effect of the black hole working perfectly. And as a final step I created a sphere in the Photoshop and blurred it using the, using the Gaussian blur to get those smooth edges and wanted to place it in the middle of the black hole but as you can see now it's even affected by black hole itself so we need to separate this in a different layer let's name it create a new layer and name it black hole core we set that black hole core to the black hole core layer and then we go to the black hole camera and tell it in the calling to render everything except the black hole core Then we place the black hole core in the middle of our black hole and make it as a child to the black hole area. 
And that's it. Now you can enjoy the black hole shader by animating that using the animator or maybe assigning control to control that camera and move with the black hole around. Let's create a simple animation using the animator and the animations. Open the animation uh, tab, create a new animation. Let's name it simple animation. And we just need to move the uh, black hole around at different frames in the timeline and you can reduce the speed of animation by reducing the samples per second number from 60 to something like 2 maybe to get that smooth animation and that's all for today's video i hope you enjoyed watching and your comments are highly appreciated also your suggestions for the next videos and we are deeply thankful to our patrons on Patreon, Ivan Ferrat, Benjamin Benji and Mohamed Aydin. Your support is highly appreciated and don't forget by becoming a patron, you can download all our project source files and experiments. And don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell to get notified about the next uh, videos. Till next time, see you soon.